Welcome to another Getting Started video for Octopus Deploy. This video will help you learn more about users, roles, and teams. We're going to cover user accounts, roles and permissions, and how they fit together based on the concept of teams. Let's get started. We're going to navigate to our configuration screen. This is where we can access the different pages for managing our users, user roles and permissions, and teams. Let's take a minute to discuss how these pieces fit together. Permissions are the individual privileges a user can have such as creating a project or deleting an environment. Next, we have roles. Roles are a group of one or more permissions. For example, a project manager role will have the permission to create projects, delete projects, and edit projects. Up next, we have teams. Teams are the cornerstone of this whole model. Each team will contain one or more roles, which in turn will cause it to inherit the permissions associated with that role. And lastly, we have users. Users are the individuals or service accounts that will log into your Octopus instance. Users can be placed on one or more teams, which will also cause them to inherit the roles and permissions that define that team. To summarize, when a user is placed on a team, they inherit the roles and permissions that are also associated with that team. Let's take a look at how this all works in the Octopus web portal. In this example, we've hired our first tester for the Hello World application. We'll need to create a new user and team for them and assign the correct permissions. We'll start by clicking on Users and then clicking Add Users. We'll enter the username, display name, email address, a password, and then click Save. Next, we'll create our new test team, assign the correct roles, and add our new user to it. Let's navigate to the Teams page and click on Add Team. We'll give our team a name and then click Save. This page is where you manage the members, roles, and settings for a specific team. We'll navigate to the User Roles tab and then click on Include User Role. The testers should be able to view the deployment process, but not be able to edit it. So let's click on the User Role dropdown and select Project Viewer as our first role, and then click Apply. We can see that our QA team now has an unrestricted Project Viewer role assigned to it. We'll also want the members of this team to have the ability to carry out deployments. So let's include another role and select Project Deployer from the dropdown. We don't want our QA members to be able to start deployments to our production environment. To prevent this, we'll click on Define Scope. By scoping this role, we're able to restrict its use to specific project groups, projects, and environments. Since we only want these users to deploy to the test environment, we'll select that from the Environments dropdown. We can see that our team now has the Project Deployer role, and that role is scoped to just the test environment. Lastly, we'll click on the Members tab, click Add Member, and select our test user from the dropdown to add them to this team. Now when that user is logged in, we can see that we have the permissions to deploy to our test environment, but not to production. Now it's your turn to create your own users and teams. Here are some recommendations to keep in mind as you do that in your own instance. Start by using existing roles instead of creating new ones. Octopus comes with a set of built-in user roles that are designed to work for most common scenarios. Don't reuse accounts. You should create a different user account for each person that will be using Octopus Deploy. And lastly, scope your roles. The permission system in Octopus Deploy provides a very flexible way of defining broad access to system functionality while still allowing it to be constrained to very specific environments or projects. Well, that's the basics of users, roles, and teams in Octopus Deploy. Be sure to check out our other Getting Started videos, and thanks for watching. Happy deployments!